Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Fashionista Life. I'm your host, Jennifer Johnson, and I am here today with Alyssa Stefanacci. Hello, hello. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, you are a skin therapist in Naples, Florida, and we're here today to talk about skin care. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, how long have you been doing this? What got you into the business? What keeps you in the business? Uh, you know, what what's interesting? Well, I've been in practice here in Naples for 35 years. Wow. And I hate to say this, but I'm the oldest in age <laughs> and the longest esthetician in Naples. Wow. That's yes. some street cred right there. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the oldest part I don't like so much. <laughs> but you know what? I, I don't always agree with the whole age thing or how long you've been doing it or any of those things because, you know, practice makes perfect. The more you've done something, the more you know about it. Uh -huh. I agree. <laughs> yes. So what got you into being a skin therapist? Where did you start? I actually started in New England and I was working for a dermatologist um, right out of school. And I saw even there, there was a need for the doctors didn't want to do extractions. They didn't want to um, fool around with them, what they referred to as the makeup patient. Oh, and then insurance started to take a play in it and they just didn't have time for anyone. Then walked in me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I kind of created a position for myself there in um, Portland, Maine. And I was there for a few years and moved to Florida, to mm -hmm. get out of the cold weather like everyone else. And I actually moved to the other coast um, to West Palm Beach. OK. And was there for about a year and getting my feet wet, just didn't find the right niche and came to Naples. Wow. And I've been here ever since. Very cool. Yes. Very cool. And I've worked with four of the leading plastic surgeons here in Naples. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that whole story is very cool. You basically created your position where you were at before, you know, when you first got started because nothing existed really like what you do. That's correct. And so I, I really want to talk because all of us have skincare issues, whether you're a man, a woman, and or a child, we all have skin issues. I know what mine are. <laughs> um, in fact, don't look my sunburned skin because I uh, did burn myself yesterday. Yes, put your sunscreen on, right? That's probably the number one thing just, to tell people. Just remember, every time your skin changes color, you've invited skin cancer into your body. Oh, See, folks, now that's scary. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in the land of sunshine. I don't know where you're listening to this podcast at, but it doesn't matter wherever you're at, you're going to have sun. So even when you're you're in the car, put on your, make sure you have sunscreen. This is correct. And we'll talk about that, like your, your must-do list, right? We should have a must-do list. First, we're going to talk about products, okay? And there's so many products out there, over-the-counter, prescriptions, everything you can imagine. And I want to talk about the new things that are on the market that we're always being inundated with. I know every time I open up a magazine, you know, Vogue or Allure or any of those, there's something new that they're saying, oh, you know, we've tried this and it's the best and you need to do this. And how do you figure out where you start? You, you try them and it doesn't work or, you know, let's talk about that. And then let's talk about actual products that are out there right now that are new to the market that, that you want to talk about. Well, Here's the thing. You always want to try to choose a professional grade product. What does professional grade mean? It means it's a product that is only sold in a physician's office. It's not sold on Amazon. It's not sold on eBay. It's not sold in the high end department stores or over the counter CVS, you know, the drug stores. You're going to pay the same amount of money, if not less compared to the cosmetic department, but you're going to get much higher percentages. Got so it. why wouldn't you do that? And it's important to find someone that you trust, that you can go to. And usually if, if there's someone in a physician's office, they know what they're talking about. So that's your go-to place to find product. And they will help guide you to what you need. Okay. And so there are differences between buying something over the counter, you know, at your local drugstore versus coming to a physician's office and, and, and purchasing the product there because they're medical grade. Yes. And a lot of 
to get volume in a product, what do they do? Just like oh. with shampoos, they add wax. Mm -hmm. What does wax do? Clog the pores. Makes it look like a whole lot more, but it's... Wow. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. And clogs the pores, then you're back with acne and all kinds of other skin well, issues. Well, then you get that dull look to your skin. Mm -hmm. You don't have that pretty glowing face. <laughs> Mine's really glowing today, probably because I am burnt, but that's another story. No. So, so, okay. So definitely buying high quality products, preferably from a dermatologist or plastic or surgeon. Um, if a spa has a medical director, then you still will get professional grade products there also. Okay. How about new products that are on the market right now that, that we may not know of that are not... Well, this is an interesting um, question because this is what I've been getting from my 30-year-olds and under. Does it have a certain ingredient in it? And they come in with a list. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. They've been doing their homework. And some of it, I look at the list and I say, oh, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> let me go to Google. Let me, let me look it up. <laughs> and I realized that that generation, 35, say, and under, are all looking for products that don't have carcinogenics in them. Wow. And in the United States, we allow 1,500 carcinogenics in our skincare products. Holy cow. In the UK and in Europe, they allow zero. Wow. So there's actually an app. <laughs> oh, my word. There's an, can, wait a second, everyone. There's an app for there's that. There's an app for that. <laughs> and... I, I learned this from a 13 year old. Of course, and, right? <laughs> who, who better to learn all this technology from? I know my this children. Yes, they look at me your daughter. Like, Mom, you don't know how to restart your iPhone? I'm like, no, because I don't know how to turn it back on. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you do it for us. Yes, exactly. That's why I pay your bill. <laughs> um, so they started coming to me, you know, asking me about products. And then they realized there was this website they were going on so they can scan a barcode on anything. And it'll tell you from a zero to 10, how bad it is for you. Wow. And we need that so we can drop this into the link. Yes. Into our link. And so people were going on. And of course, you and I, by our ages at this yes. point, <laughs> me being a lot older than you, but still, we've probably drenched ourselves oh, I'm in sure these things. But that's great that the newer generations, mm -hmm. the younger people are really paying attention. And the consumer is much smarter than they used to be. Because much smarter. Internet. We have everything. The internet. It started out with like New Beauty magazine. That was like the Bible of plastic surgery and skin oh, wow. care. It came out four times a year. I think it comes out more often now. And but now, now you have this app. That so, is so cool. Yeah. So I had to really research and mm -hmm. look around. And of course you have the problem of getting something from another country right. brought in to the United States during COVID. It's not that easy. <laughs> no, not it's that easy. Not. So there is a company called Illuminaire MD and it's out of the UK and they have zero carcinogenics in their product because wow. in the UK, again, you can't mm -hmm. use them. They won't allow it. It's not called an FDA there, but it's what our FDA is here. So I assume because it's coming over from another country, it's not necessarily been, quote unquote, cleared by the FDA, but. We well, they now have a packaging company here in the United States. Oh, so it, mm -hmm. it's, it's a new awesome. company. It's actually number two in Europe and in the UK. It's number two. And now we have it. And now we here. have it here. And it's growing throughout. Mm -hmm throughout the United States. Um, but it's, it's a nice product. It's reasonably priced. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. And it's very simple. So is it cleansers and, and the whole gamut? Cleansers yeah, it's and... the whole, it's the whole gamut, but they don't necessarily believe that you have to use the same moisturizer. Well, excuse me. They don't necessarily believe that you use different moisturizers for different times of day. Oh, so it's all the That's same. That's something that was a marketing <laughs> and who has fallen victim to that? Oh, yes. not me. <laughs> because our skin doesn't really know if it's awake or sleeping or you know, 
It doesn't That's really funny. Yeah. You're, you're so right. Right. So, and you know, then you've got the people who work nights, you know, yeah, and then like, they'll what say, do you, what do I use? And when do I use it? What you, you use what you need. Mm -hmm. And I never, ever, when someone comes into me, because I'm the consumer also, I never, I have them bring in everything they're using. Mm -hmm. And I do not tell them to throw away or get rid of what they have. If it's almost gone, or they just mm -hmm. bought it, I say, look, you know, finish this up or use it on your neck and your chest, and then we'll introduce a new product. Or as you finish your products, when you're ready to rebuy, let me introduce a new product mm -hmm. to you. Sounds good. You know, I think we need to have one, have a podcast with the video where we, I bring in oh, a sure. bunch of beauty products. I mean, I am very minimal minimalistic. I use one brand and mm -hmm. that's it. And I use the cleanser and the cream and I don't use under eye cream. I don't use serums. I, I don't, well, is that bad? Well, no, here, here's the thing. So I had a lady the other day and I have this happen probably about once every three or four months. She is one of my older patients, new patient to me. And she said, oh, yes, I use a very good line. And I said, okay, what is that? And she goes, I use Clinique. And I said, Clinique is a very good line. Clinique is meant for teenagers, preteens. Really? Yes. I'd never and knew that. It was, it's a company owned by Estee Lauder. Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to transition when they opened and started that young person to Estee Lauder. Oh, it makes it never happened. And it never happened. They stayed with it. <laughs> they stayed with it. So it isn't necessarily an age thing when you have to transition mm -hmm. into different things. It's the condition of your skin. Okay. You know, you and I have, and I've worked on your skin. Yes. You and I have very pretty skin to look at. We don't have good elasticity. Oh, that's because oh, we have oh. those, <laughs> those light eyes, you yes. know? And so what did we get? We have the pretty skin to look at, right? Nice, even pretty creamy, mm -hmm. but we don't have the elasticity. Which means it's going to sag. Well, brown lines. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I always say, just keep smiling and nobody notices. No one's going to see it. <laughs> they just Except see the little, the crow, little crow's, crow's feet. <laughs> exactly. But so as, as we age or as our skin changes, and it, it changes about every seven years. Now, that doesn't mean it's 7, 14, right. 21. It's just about every seven years. And hormones play a huge part in them. And we need different things. Right. And we need less of other things. So that's where I come in to try to guide someone in the right direction. Um, I never want anybody to break the bank because I always think, of me being the customer. Right. And that's so smart because, you know, mm -hmm. you buy, you do the same thing. You have skin just like the rest right. of us. And, and I want them to come back and I want them to be able to say, oh, look, you know, my face looks amazing. Right. I'm going to see Alyssa today. Who is she? Well, she does my skin. She, and I want, and I think that's probably why I have been in practice for 35 years here in Naples, because Naples has been very good to me, but it can be very <laughs> unforgiving if you right. don't do right by people. Exactly. It's always doing right by the client right. because they will definitely come back to you. They know that you are taking care of them. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately what matters. Uh, we are going to head to a quick commercial break and we will be right back with Alyssa. And we're going to be talking next about skincare. Um, what is what is a tried and true product or what are tried and true products out there and um, specific skin conditions and perhaps what we can do about those. So we will be back in a couple of minutes. No, this is just my commercial break. And then we're going for 15 more minutes and then we're done for the first episode. It went great. It went, see, we're just talking. I know. It's like, we're, my hands are sweating. <laughs> You're like, it's okay. I kept going. <laughs> it's oh, and if you hit your hand on there, you can hear it. Yeah, I was. So just do this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Where's the animal I'm supposed to be petting?" <laughs> I'll bring a stuffed animal okay. next time. Um, so now we'll just talk about. Um, I think I'll leave the skincare. We'll see what we have time for in this episode because um, we're going to talk about procedures. Mm -hmm. And the second part. I think I'm going to put what you should do for skincare in your ages down here. Mm -hmm. 
but we'll see if we're running short on that time. That went by fast. It did. It did. It was 15 minutes. So now we have 15 more. We're going to talk about tried and true products mm-hmm. um, and then skincare problems. So, all right. You ready for me? Okay. Hello, everyone. And you, we are um, back up. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Jennifer, and you are listening to The Fashionista Life. And we are back from commercial break with Alyssa Stefanacci, and she is a skin therapist in Naples, Florida. We are talking about everything skincare and skin related today. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. So we've talked about products that are on the market, new products. Now we're going to talk about tried and true products, things that have been out there for a long time that that are, you know, have shown that they work and then specific skin conditions. So products. Here's the thing. There's all kinds of things out there on the market, but the tried and true and the things that is still the gold standard in plastic surgery and in dermatology is Retin-A. Okay. And that's in products or is that injectables? No. Retin-A is a topical. It's the pharmaceutical name is Tretinol. Okay. And we originally was designed for teenage acne many, many, many years ago. Oh my. Does it work for that? Well, yes, it does. (laughs) But what they found was when they were examining the skin that it was decreasing, the the texture was pretty, the fine lines were gone, the pores were smaller. Then it became a beauty product very oh. quickly. It's still a prescription, but what happened a few years later, probably 25 years ago, retinols became popular. That is still your tretinol. Oh, so, so retin-A, sorry to yes. interrupt, but retin-A is different than retinol. Yes, And how is it different? Retin-A has acne properties in it to fight acne. Retinols don't. They're not harsh. They go on the skin. They're micro-encapsulated. So that means they go on the skin over a 12-hour period of time. That's why we have you use it at night. Oh. So what it's doing is it's a cell turnover. So we're turning over those cells faster than our body normally would do. When we were in our 30s and under, those cells were flicking off our face every 10, 15 days. After that, it's about every 70, 80 days. Oh, my gosh. So I have skills. Yes. So (laughs) that's why exfoliating using a retinol or a retin-A is very important. Most people, a retinol is all they need. Okay. Retin-A is truly meant for acne and it was meant for cystic acne. And, and so Retin-A can only be found in prescriptions. This is correct. So what you find at the drugstore or in a lot of the products that are not prescription is retinol, which is, comp- which is different. Right. And you really want to stick with, like we had talked about before mm-hmm. in the last segment, a professional grade product. You are going to get just the retinol. When you buy something over the counter or in a drugstore, you're going to get other additives in it. Okay. So you're not going to get that big punch that you really want. If there was one product that, is there any product at all that is okay to buy over the counter and use on your face? Cleanser. Okay. So that would, that, okay. Yeah. If I always tell people if they're, and most cleansers, even professional grade, aren't going to break the bank. But if you had to find one product that would be it. Is there any particular one that would be your go-to? Um, sure. I like, and I, I'm going to call it Biomedic, because, it, but that's not. That was <laughs> their original name. So they were sold out, and it's now La Roche-Posay. Oh, yes. Yes. And La Roche-Posay, you um, can buy over the counter at CVS, Walgreens. I believe you can buy it on Amazon. So if you were going to pick a product, that would be over the counter, a line, that would be one I would go with. That was the first glycolic acid company out there. Really? And they make sunscreen. Yes, they make the best sunscreen. I actually didn't work for me <laughs> yesterday, but I think it was the person that was applying it. Maybe, maybe it look, could have been old. There's a handprint. <laughs> yes, I see that very clearly. Um, 
it's funny. But anyway, so that's one over-the-counter thing that would be okay to use. Yes. And then um, any other tried and true products yes. that you would recommend? Um, I always tell people there's two things that we all have to use. We have to use a retinol at night and we have to use a vitamin C. Vitamin C is what our skin is made up of, what our collagen is made up of. And over the years, they have gotten the vitamin C to perfection. Everything else you're going to use on your face is going to be the frosting. Mm -hmm. We have to have the cake before we can have the frosting. Ooh, I like the cake too. Yes. <laughs> so how do you get, uh, is it in products that you buy or is it a separate thing or is it an ingestible? No, it's a, um, that's a good question. Ingestible mm. because I do get that. I, I It just makes sense. Yes. It's like vitamin C. If I take a vitamin C tablet, is that all I need or do I still need to put it on my face? No, you need to put it on your face and you want to get a stabilized vitamin C. So when you're looking for vitamin Cs, you'll find them in glass bottles. You'll find them in oh, dark really? glass bottles. And why is that? Because it oxidizes from the light. Mm -hmm. The company that we had spoken about earlier, um, Illuminaire MD, they hit it out of the park. So you get their vitamin C with a powdered cap on top. And you constitute the bottle. You push the powder into the bottle and shake it up and you have a fresh oh, bottle wow. of vitamin C because vitamin C loses its potency at about a month and a half. And when you buy a bottle of vitamin C, it lasts you about four to six months. Wow. So it doesn't go from a 25 to zero, but it goes down quickly. Mm -hmm. So by constituting it, in other words, um, and the Luminaire MD, you get three small bottles that last you for six months. So wow. each time you're getting a fresh new bottle. They have portioned it out correctly. Genius. Why didn't I think of that? Right. We all have those <laughs> aha moments. Like seriously, something so simple. And I knew <laughs> that the vitamin C loses its potency. We all know that in the industry, mm -hmm. but they thought of it. So, so that's another uh, tried and true product. Mm -hmm. Is there any other products? Um, and I'm going to ask you in a second, what's, well, well, we'll talk about that in the next segment, what the number one thing is that we need to make sure we do. But um, any other tried and true products out there that, that you've used forever? To be perfectly honest with you, the gold standard is a retinol at night, microencapsulated, which means it goes over a period of 12 hours and a vitamin C during the day. And it always comes in a liquid form, a couple little drops, your whole face, your neck, what you have left over on your hands, put on the oh, back of your hands. Yes. Oh my gosh. That is gotta be the place that everybody misses. That and dear Lord, if you ever stand beside somebody <laughs> in the grocery store yeah. line with very, very short hair uh -huh. that they've had their whole life, mm -hmm. the lines behind their neck is horrific. <laughs> so put some behind your, yes. yes. Do you know, it's really funny. You know, I mean, you can have a beautiful face and it's been, you know, it's just taken been taken care of. care of. And then your hands. Mm -hmm. I remember, I, I mean, to this day, I still look at my mom's hands and they're, you know, she has mm -hmm. dark spots on them. Right. Um, never have put sunscreen on them, nothing. And I'm now beginning to <laughs> Get that. I'm like, oh my God, oh my gosh. Well, we my are neck. our mother. We are our mother. Uh, I think so. But you know, like it's, I forget to put something on my neck. I forget to bring the product down yeah. onto my neck or, yeah. or what do you call this area? Your decollete. Decollete. I, or chest. Or chest, <laughs> AKA my burned chest yes. at the moment, which, you know, I should have been wearing more sunscreen or applying more often, but, um, which kind of leads me into the next, um, questions that I have for you is, skin conditions. And I'm thinking two in my head and I'm, what are the, the conditions that come up to you most? I have two in my head that I'm thinking of. Anti-aging. Okay. So people want to see if they can reverse the aging process that they've already. Can you? Actually in today's world with the products we have, we can improve damaged skin. Okay. We couldn't 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now we can, there are some really good products out there. Um, I do a lot of teenage acne. 
<laughs> yes. And I, I remember coming to you for that. Yes, yes. Yes. So I have a lot of, and it's interesting. They're starting younger and younger, mm-hmm. 11 years old. Wow. Um, again, all the hormones and the food, the kids are, you know, growing up so quickly and their hormones are changing. So I see a lot of acne patients, acne, no one should have acne. Acne can be cured, not necessarily by me primarily, but by me and your dermatologist. Mm-hmm. Because I know we hear a lot about, uh, is it Accutane? Accutane, Accutane is oral retin okay. Oh my gosh, really? I did not know that. Yes. So you um, could just put retin on there and... No. No. <laughs> See so, here, I'm like, well, why not? It's a lot more potent. Okay. Um, and it's usually um, anywhere from six months to a year treatment. Wow. And it, it is it is a very, um, it is a drug that you have to be cautious of. Mm-hmm. But I, being in the business as many years as I had, I researched it and I put my 12-year-old, which is now 27. Oh, my gosh. My 12-year-old wow. on it. And I remember someone saying to me, how can you do that? It's going to stunt his growth. He's six foot four. Didn't. <laughs> no. Wow. And then I heard, well, he will be depressed. It causes depression. I said, acne causes depression. Mm-hmm. So it's not a drug to, to be afraid of. Okay. And that is that in extreme cases, if you can't get it under control other That's, ways? If you, yeah, because you they'll, they'll have you go different routes, you know, as far as antibiotics and topical. But in today's world, we should not see anyone with active acne for any period of time because we can get rid of sure. it. Sure, you know my biggest one is and and because I'm of of an age group where I deal with melasma, mm-hmm. and I have tried. I mean, I I don't know if you um, you remember, but I don't know if our listeners remember. There was a product out there called Triluma. Mm-hmm. Used it and used it, and then it worked so well for me. I'm thinking this is too good to be true, and then it was pulled off the market in 2020. Yeah, so no longer that for me. Um, so I have another product. It is back on the market. Oh, it is. Yes. Um, they had to change their label because what happened was, like you, it worked very well. Mm-hmm. Do you know what Triluma is? I do not, and do it I want to know? Yes. <laughs> It is it going to harm me? No, it is Retin-A, which is tretinol. Okay. It is a vitamin. Actually, let me step back. It's the um, it's your bleaching agent, your hydroquinone, your Retin-A, and a steroid. The steroid makes it tolerable. Oh, tolerable. Because the Retin-A is very strong. Oh. And when you have a product like that, we need a driver. So who's the driver of the Retin-A? or of the hydroquinone, for an example, for bleaching, mm-hmm. it's the Retin-A drives the hydroquinone in. And oh, that's wow. why there's a mixture of the three. But you're only supposed to use it for four months at a time. Yes. And so we had doctors reading it and writing it and writing it as it's a script. Mm-hmm. And the FDA got involved and pulled it. Yeah. I just remember it worked really, really well. And you know, I, I'm talking about melasma on my face from hormones and the sun. And mm-hmm. it's like my sun meter. <laughs> yes. If I go out with, you know, even wearing sunscreen and a hat, I still seem to get it back. Pigment has memory. Oh, I wish it didn't. I know. <laughs> I sure Darn it off. It. Ah. So all we're doing is, is pushing it back. And okay. I can get rid of everything on your face. And then you will go out in the sun without sunscreen on. Mm-hmm. And it'll all be back with a vengeance. Oh, and it's crazy. Yes. So sunscreen's important. I tell people, you know, yes, we can get rid of this and it'll take a little while, but you can't not wear a sunscreen. It will come back. So that, that's our big takeaway today is wear sunscreen. Yes. Because you can be in front of a computer and that blue light, I am sure, it's got to do something. Sure. Yeah. The, the sun is the fastest aging process we have. It ages us faster than any anything out there. Wow. I'm going to be eternally young because I hardly go out into the sun. <laughs> you and me both. Then when I do, I burn like this. So I probably took care of it all. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> well, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. And well, thank um, you I for can't, having me. Absolutely. I can't wait to do another deep dive with you um, on the next podcast so we can talk more about skincare. 
Thank you so much. And Thank you. you have been listening to the Fashionista Life. I'm your host, Jennifer. Please tune in to all of our episodes. Um, we would love to have you on here. And um, thanks for tuning in.